Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to talk about a very famous vulnerability in modern applications, which is known as dependency confusion. Okay, so let us try to go ahead and see that what is this particular vulnerability all about, how we can find it, how we can exploit this particular vulnerability and at last how we can fix it. But as always, before going to this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video, then go ahead and check it out. The link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it at the right side of the screen. And now without further ado, let us get started. Now, before diving deep into this video, let us try to understand first that what is this dependency confusion? Okay. So first of all, we need to talk about dependencies. So what are dependencies? So normally, if you know a little bit of programming, you know that when we are creating some kind of application or even when we are creating a normal, you know, simple program, we basically sometimes import certain libraries into our program. Why we import these libraries? Because in these libraries, there are certain codes that we want to integrate into our own application. And because we don't want to, you know, uh, type the whole code again, we simply import it from other developers you know and these you know codes that can be you know reused by any other uh, programs or any other developer is what you call libraries or what you call dependencies these are the things on which a particular application is dependent on right if you talk about python we can simply import a library using the import keyword similarly in you know uh, node what we can do is we can import the libraries using a keyword which is known as require Okay, I hope you have so far understood that what is this dependencies. Now, what is this dependency confusion attack? Now, to understand this, let us take a very simple example. Suppose that we have created a program, a web application, let's say, in which we have imported a library. Okay, and now let's say that after a few days or after let's say one or two years, the library is outdated or maybe the library has been removed from the platform. Okay, because if you talk about like importing, you know, libraries uh, from in node, there are, you know, collection of libraries which are hosted on a platform which is known as NPM. Okay, so let us assume that in this example, I'm talking about node. So let's say we have imported a library from NPM. And now after a year, the library has been removed from NPM. Okay, now seeing this as a chance, the attacker can create their own library with the same name and then can add malicious code now what is going to happen after that is let's say that after you know one month or few days you try to update your existing library so that you can get the latest version of it in that scenario automatically the malicious library which is hosted by the attacker with the same name is going to be imported into your program into your application and as a result your whole application might get compromised this is one scenario in another scenario sometimes it also happens that the you know company might be using an internal library that they have created okay in this scenario itself if they have not properly configured the you know how the application is importing libraries the attacker can again register a new library with the same name and again can cause a dependency confusion attack because in this scenario Basically, the application get confused that whether it need to fetch the libraries from a private source or from the public source. So this is what dependency confusion is all about. I hope you all have understood this so far. If you have any doubts, let us go ahead and see practicals. And I'm quite sure that after that, you'll be able to understand what this dependency confusion attack is. So let's dive deep into the practical. Now, let us go ahead and see that how we can find dependency confusion vulnerability in real world scenarios. Okay. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a small lab, which I already have created. But by this lab, I'm going to show you exactly how dependency confusions can be found. Okay. So if I type a list, you can see we have this index.js file. Let's go ahead and type a node index.js right over here. And the first thing that you're going to notice is it says this web app belongs to Fayas, right? and you can see it is also saying hello world and now what the next thing is that we need to go into our browser and we're going to type this particular website which is dependency.bpractical.tech 
okay and once it is like rendered you can see this page which says that this app is still under development right now the first thing is as an attacker you want to look for files like packages.json package.json you know packages log.json files like that because these files are going to give you the exact you know uh, libraries that are in use by this particular application okay if these files are not present then you can you know look for some errors and you can trace those errors to find that okay which of the libraries are in use for example in this particular scenario i'm going to go and look for packages or package.json and once i hit enter you can see that we are getting this exact you know uh, json file over here and if you go under this dependencies section we can see that there are two libraries which is in use right the first one is express and the second one is fayas p practical now the thing is that express is like one of the most famous you know uh, libraries out there for node but the second library which is fayas p practical it seems to be a little interesting because this seems to be a custom made you know library so it might be possible that this is uh, this is maybe their private library that they forgot to remove from here or you know uh, this is the library that they have published so the thing is that this library is seems to be developed by being practical itself so the chances are like this particular library might be you know uh, vulnerable to dependency confusion okay so let's go to npm i'm going to open a new incognito tab here let's go to google to npm so npm is like you know is like the hub of all the modules for node okay so we can say here npm js and let's go and search for the package so the first package was express right so i'm going to type express and i'm going to see if there's any uh, libraries like express over here and you can see we have got this exact match which means that the library of express is already present and we cannot go ahead and you know create a same library with the same name okay what about the second one so let's go and check the second library name which was fayas p practical let's go ahead and type that so i'm going to type fayas b practical let's hit on search and you can clearly see that this particular search has returned no data at all which means that we can create a package of the same name without any issues okay so let us go ahead and do that now for that we what we need to do is we need to go to our kali linux let me just quickly log in into my kali linux over here and second thing is we need to install npm into our machine okay so i'm going to go ahead and type sudo apt install npm and minus y okay sorry npm minus y okay in my case you can clearly see that it is already the newest version but in your case it's going to take some time okay once this particular thing is done what you need to do is you need to type the command which is npm login okay and once you will do that you can see that we are getting this link okay using which we can log in into this cli right so i'm just going to copy this link from here okay and let's go ahead and open this in a new tab and we need to create an account on npm okay if you don't have any account created you can go ahead and click on this create account and create one for yourself in my case i already have created an account and i am already logged in into this logged in into this application so i'm just going to leave it as it is okay so i'm just going to stop this right over here okay and once these things are completed on our machine what we need to do is so from here we can see the name is fayas b practical right so we are going to simply go ahead and create a file name as fayas b practical but first let me go to the video folder fayas b practical i hope the name is correct let me just take a look at it yeah seems nice uh, once we have that let's go inside this directory and we are going to go ahead and type npm in it minus y okay and you can see we have these things completed and another thing which i would like to do is i'm going to change this name because you can see in the name it says fayas b practical but the b is like not capitalized so i'm just going to go and rename the package.json here and i'm going to type fayas b practical okay that's it let's save this and now i'm going to create a file which is let's say index.js and i'm going to add a simple 
you know uh, code let's say console dot log sorry soul dot log and i'm going to put a message like you know oh, let's say you are app something like this okay let's save this site over here and lastly what i would also like to do is i would like to just you know upgrade this version from 1.0.0 to 1.1.0 the reason is that if you take a closer look you can see that they are using this 1.0.0 version of fias p practical okay and if there is a slightly newer version of the same package present on npm then the npm command is automatically going to fetch the newer version okay and in that case our malicious package is going to be get loaded fine so let's go ahead and do that so we have 1.1.0 over here the last thing that we want to do is we want to type npm publish and minus minus access set to public okay so this is what we actually need to do from the attacker's perspective once you hit enter you can see okay we're getting an error let me see what is the error invalid for new package okay let me that's the case let me just change the name to be practical itself let's see how it's going to work in public access okay and as you can see the package has been imported successfully right so our first part is completed now what we need to do is from attacker's perspective is just wait okay because once the developer is going to update the repositories chances are that our code is going to be imported instead of the actual code written by the developers okay so let's see what's going to happen from the developer's perspective now let us assume that i am the developer over here and let's see what will be going to happen from my end okay so let's say after a few few days or few weeks i you know thought of updating the repositories or updating the you know modules present in my application okay but before that let me show you what the exact code was so if i show you the index.js file you can see the fias b practical module is getting imported over here and if you go inside fias b practical you can see it was saying this web app belongs to fias right which was the exact message we were seeing earlier when we were like testing for dependency confusion now let's say as a developer i thought of you know updating the repositories what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply go ahead and type the command which is npm install okay just going to do this command hit enter let's wait for a few seconds and if you take a closer look you can see that it has added a new package removed a new package and uh, it has audited everything and our package is up to date it now the last thing which i'm going to do is i'm going to simply go ahead and type node index.js so that we can again check the application okay and as you can see we're getting this error let me have a look at it okay so again it was an error because of my mistake but no worries once we have everything configured the last thing we will do is we'll go ahead and try node index.js right over here and if i hit enter right now you see what has happened it says that you are hacked okay which was the exact code that we as an attacker wrote over here like let's take a look you can see it is you are hacked right so using this particular uh, vulnerability we were able to overwrite the existing module and we were able to do a dependency confusion attack right so this is how you can you know look for dependency confusion vulnerabilities okay right now we have just did you know like an identification of a dependency confusion in the upcoming videos i'm going to also talk about how we can exploit it and how we can you know uh, like look into it more as an attacker's perspective but the main goal of this video was to make you all understand that what is dependency confusion and how it happens okay and now the last thing is that how we as an you know developer can fix this particular vulnerability okay so it is actually quite simple first thing is that you need to regularly check if any of the packages that you're using is like outdated or maybe you know it is like uh, removed from the uh, npm platform or any other platform that you're using okay the second thing is that if you let's say you're importing a private module in that scenario go ahead and use this particular keyword like let me show you like let's say i want to use this module right so what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to remove this version from here and add file 
payas be practical just like this I'm going to save this and now every time it's just going to fetch the uh, modules from the private repo only okay so make sure to you know focus on these on these things in order to prevent the dependency confusion attack i hope you all have understood this if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under in cyber security bug bounty and ethical hacking and if you like the way i teach i have few courses up and running on udemy so you can go ahead and check them out and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and thank you so much for watching